cool. So we've got Ben who has applied to Sport and Exercise Science and Izzy also Sport and Exercise Science from Cambridge and plays football. Okay, you'll fit right in here. We've got a number of football teams and you'll very much enjoy this performance analysis session. Um, Megan, Sport and Exercise Science from Kent. Cool. What sport do you play, Megan? Um, Sophia, Sport and Science, Hertfordshire, you're a dancer, but you coach football and an assistant physio. Wow, that's good experience that you've got there. Um, we do have our dance science programme as well, which um, we run here at the university, which kind of is a mixture of the two, if, if that's what you're into as well. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a really fun programme. And obviously we have a big dance programme so you can get involved and in, keep up your dancing from that perspective. Um, Amy, Surrey, and you play hockey. Cool. So again, we've got our brand new multi-surface pitch there, which is designed for our hockey teams to be playing on. So definitely be feeling at home there. Um, Ben from West Sussex and plays tennis. So he will know this area very well, I'm sure. Um, he, uh, so we're across the road from the university, we actually have a, one of the big tennis clubs so again a lot of our tennis players and our um, tennis team go and go over there um megan go to the gym okay cool so we do have a gym on site and students get that at a discounted rate which is very very cheap compared to most gyms um and uh yeah so you can use that whenever you want to and um, we do also use it as part of our teaching on a regular basis as well so we get you in the gym and teach you about fitness and how to use the kit properly and how you might you know kind of inform your strength and conditioning practice and things like that scotland ewan um do triathlon and fitness fab so again, we do have a, a kind of running and athletics team um, that kind of works through triathlon and um, kind of type activities. Um, but we also have an awful lot of people that um, are interested in things like ultra marathons and stuff like that. So we actually, as part of one of our modules here, you get to work in the um, environmental chamber and we do a lot of the um, Kind of acclimatization for athletes that might want to run the marathon de sable which is something that crazy people do <laughs> they run for a very long distance across the uh, sahara desert so you don't really you uh, need some acclimatization to that um equally looking to tokyo which is fingers crossed going to happen this year um a lot of the teams are looking to do acclimatization in chambers and things environmental chambers there and um, to be prepared for the conditions they're going to experience in tokyo so that is certainly something you can get involved in um nia we have spawn exercise science again and you live in barbados wow i bet it's a bit sunnier there than it is here that's one of our take homes is we say it's the sunniest place in britain but pretty sure you might top that nia um you, you're from liverpool um take part in synchronized swimming and a bit of regular swimming fab so we do have we don't have a swimming pool on campus but in Chichester, we do have um, the swim team that go and train at a local pool um, where our buses run regularly. So you can easily get there. And Charlotte, Charlie, not sure which one you like to be called there. You're for performance sailing, which is great. So um, it's one of our newer degrees. We are you would be joining our fourth year of performance sailing. Um, and we are setting up our sailing team as we speak. We were hoping for it to start competing this last um, kind of, well, kind of May time for the competitions at the university cycle. But in fact, we're actually looking more towards starting that next year now because obviously everything got cancelled, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, fab guys. So really good to meet you all. Um, what I'm going to do now is I will hand over and pop you into Naomi's capable hands, who is going to talk to you about performance analysis um, and how that fits into your degree and also what you can do with the information um, that you have there. So oh, last but not least, we've got Taylor and again, you play football. Great. So we've got 
I, I say I like to say we punch above our weight. We're a small university, but we do very well in football, comparison to the size of the university. All right, I will stop sharing my screen now and stop talking and hand over to Naomi. Cool. Thanks very much, Penny. And hi, everyone. Um, great to meet you. As Penny said, today's session is really going to focus um, around performance analysis. So I will just share my screen with you, hopefully. Uh, she says, hold on, technical difficulties here for a second. OK, can you see my screen? Excellent. Penny, I now can't see my chat, so you may have to uh, you may have to help me out with the with the chat if that's OK. Absolutely fine. Excellent. Thank you. So, um, as I said, my name's Naomi Datsun. Um, I'm a senior lecturer in sports performance analysis here at the university. Um, and prior to coming to the university, I spent around about 10 years um, working in football. So it's great to um, see and hear from quite a few of you that are involved in football. Um, so I was lucky enough to work with the England women's teams um, and I spent quite a lot of time working with the Lionesses. So you might be able to spot my face uh, on the back row of this picture when the team won the bronze medal at the World Cup um, in Canada in 2015. So in terms of uh, the things I want to go over today, uh, this is just a little outline of the session that we're going to do. Um, first of all, just to think about what performance analysis is. Um, some of you may have come across performance analysis before. Um, for some of you, it may be a new area, which is absolutely fine. Um, then we're just going to touch a little bit on why we need performance analysis. Um, and then finally, I just want to show you um, some of the performance analysis software that we have and that we use here at the university um, so you can kind of get a flavour um, of how you may be able to use that um, either within your degree or for those of you that maybe want to go on um, and think about this as a future career or an area of interest. OK, so just to start us off, uh, my first question out to you guys is what do you understand by the term performance analysis? So what what would you define performance analysis as so if anyone either wants to jump on the mic or i'm guessing you may prefer to write something um in the chat which is absolutely fine um give us your best shot of what performance analysis is now this could be a bit challenging because i can't see the chat <laughs> um i think what it means is um, that you can take either the whole game as itself and then break each part down, but um, you tend to focus on certain skills performed in that game and break down that component and see what went well, what went wrong with it, and potentially how you can overcome um, the issues. Excellent. Yeah, was that Ewan, was that? Yeah. Yeah, I could tell by the accent. Thank you, Ewan. Um, that's a really great answer. Yeah, so within performance analysis, we're looking at components of performance, which you nicely highlighted there. And we're also looking for kind of the strengths and weaknesses um, of either the opposition team or individuals we might come across. So, yeah, that's a really, really nice definition. In terms of, I guess, a kind of a dictionary definition or a literature definition, um, performance analysis has been broken down into these four steps. Um, so the first one is about collecting information. The second one is synthesizing. The third is interpreting. And then the fourth is communicating. So it's kind of a step by step process. So we think about observing, so collecting that information pulling it all together in the synthesis. So that might be where we take the components and put them together to understand the whole match. Um, interpreting that performance. So what does it mean? As you and said there about strengths and weaknesses, how could we actually then go on to, you know, beat a team once we understand what they're perhaps good at or not so good at? And then finally, um, it's really important that we communicate that information um, to the coaches and to the players that we're working with. And this um, area of performance analysis, we look at performance data um, and that can be performance in training or it can be performance in matches. 
And with performance analysis, we're generally talking quite often about team sport activity. Um, I guess with performance analysis, it kind of fits on a continuum um, between performance analysis is more used in team sports. And then as we go to more of our individual sports, we then perhaps go slightly more towards biomechanics, where it may be kind of a technique type analysis. The other thing that's quite cool with performance analysis and our use of performance data is that we can look at technical and tactical information. So you'll see um, the picture here, something I'm sure you know, you'll all be familiar with. You know, I know a few of you have said you like football, if you like hockey, you know, these kind of statistics um, for two different teams will be something that you'll be really familiar with. Um, and that's something that we get to calculate and we get to look at in terms of performance analysis. So that's one side of our performance data. And then the other side that we can look at is we can look at our physical data. So I'm sure you might have seen uh, when players are playing various team sports, whether it's rugby, football, hockey, you may see players running around with what looks like a little uh, little pouch um, on the back of their, uh, between their shoulder blades, as you can see from this picture here. And that means that player is wearing a GPS unit um, and here at the university, we're really fortunate that we have a number of these GPS units. Um, so they're industry standard. Um, so, you know, high level team. So all of your professional sports teams will be using them. And we have that kit here at the university. So, you know, if you come here, which we hope you will, um, you'll get to use that that kit. And what we can do with that is we can put those units on players um, when they're performing and we can look at things such as how far did that player run? How many sprints did they do? Um, how many times did they change direction? So when we're talking about performance analysis, we have kind of these two strands. So our technical and tactical and then also our physical data. So I might be biased, but I think it's a pretty cool, a pretty cool area of sports science to look at. So as I said, we've got this kind of definition where we look at these four stages of performance analysis. And what we're going to look at today is have a little bit of a think around this collecting of performance analysis data. So if we want to collect information about what a team is doing, the first thing we need to do is to be able to observe that performance. So just to see how good your observation skills are, I've got a little task for you now. And in a minute, I'm going to put a picture up um, of some tigers. So it's a loose link to um, sports science and performance analysis, but I'm going to put some tigers up and I want you to count the number of tigers in the picture and as quickly as you can and then put that answer in the chat for us, please. OK, so here's our picture. Quick as you can, put your number in the chat. And then hopefully my assistant Penny will be able to tell me what the answers are. Okay, we have, oh goodness, we have a lot of nines, okay. some elevens, a 14, a 15, a couple of 14s. Okay. And a 15. Who said 15, Penny? Uh, Nia. Nia, OK. Nia, you are right. Good powers of observation. OK, so there were 15 tigers in this picture. So hopefully everyone saw at least nine. Um, I might be concerned if we didn't see nine. But yet there were nine kind of big tigers. We've got a couple of little ones. And then in a couple of places, we've got kind of two tigers behind one another. So 15 tigers on our picture. Now, you may think, why, why is she showing me pictures of tigers? OK, there is a link. Trust me, there's a link. So this model um, is called the kind of coaching process. And this was proposed by Franks and colleagues in 1983. And they really talk about the athlete performing. Then we have the coach observing that performance. And then based on what that coach observes, the coach then plans the session and then conducts the next session and then it goes around in a cycle. So if we link that back to our Tigers, the point I'm trying to make is that 
this whole um, process, this whole coaching process is based on our powers of observation. And sometimes it's not easy um, to observe things. Um, sometimes, you know, we, we may get distracted. There may be lots of things going on. Uh, and it may just be really hard to accurately observe um, that performance. So this section here around the coach observation is where we can bring in performance analysis, because what performance analysis does, it allows us to kind of go back over that performance and really to try and break that down, as you and suggested at the start, break that down into kind of manageable chunks. And we can observe that performance without all of the different things going on around us, which may impact on our performance. OK, so again, another bit of uh, audience participation, if possible. Um, so I may have given you a few clues in the things that I just spoke about there. But why do you think it might be hard to accurately observe sporting performance? So again, you can either put it in the chat and hopefully Penny will relay that to me. Or if you're feeling brave, please feel free to uh, jump on the mic and give us some thoughts and opinions on this question, please. OK, so Ewan's written it is subjective. Excellent. Yeah. Um, Sophia, similar things are subjective based on the coach's personal opinion. Yeah, really good point. Got a few more to type in. Yeah, no worries. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Performance differs each time from Sophia. Yeah, really good point. Yeah. A couple more typing. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, Nia's written, some sports move quite fast, so if it's just by eye, that could be challenging. Yeah, definitely. Validity of observing it from UN. Excellent, yeah. I feel like you guys might have done some performance analysis before. You've got some good answers coming out here. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it's part of the um, uh, the curriculum, isn't it, before yeah. um, at school? Sophia's written, difficult in sports like swimming, can't see clearly below the water. Yeah, really good point. Really good point. Yeah. Okay, it's one guys. thing that as a biomechanist, I'm forever trying to get around when uh, yeah. when we think about water sports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, you guys touched on some of these points, which is brilliant. Um, so this diagram is looking at some of the limitations that we might have to event recall. And so when I say event recall, it's basically being able to recall accurately what happened in that performance so if we take a you know a game of football it's what actually happened in that performance and these are some of the things that might go wrong so we definitely mentioned subjectivity um so often you know we might be biased to what's happening um and we may let our kind of opinions come into our our processes and our decision making so that's subjective bias we also have something called memory overload um which i'm sure you're all familiar with and probably have all experienced at different times but that's just basically that we can't remember everything so in a football game you know there may be and there generally are thousands of things that happen um so if we asked coaches afterwards to tell us everything that happened in that game it's physically impossible for them to remember all of those things okay so we have something called memory overload and actually some research that's been done in that area showed that coaches can only remember somewhere between 40 and 60 percent of what happened in a game so we definitely need performance analysis to help us top that up um, the other two things that we have and the problems we have with being able to recall information is one is called highlighting and that's basically where 
if one player does something brilliantly in a game, that's the thing that everyone remembers. Similarly, if one player does something that they would like to forget and they would like everyone else to forget, you can guarantee that no one forgets that. And that's the thing that everyone remembers. So our mind does crazy things and just really highlights and remembers these either very good points or these very bad points. And then the other reason why sometimes we can't observe performance accurately is something called halo effect. And that is where we basically have a preconceived idea of what a player's performance is going to be like. So if we take, you know, the very best hockey player in the world, um, we already think that they're going to have a good game before they play that game. OK, so it's something called a halo effect. It does work the other way. So if we think a player is really terrible and we, we have that opinion of them, we generally think that no matter what happens, they're going to have a poor game. So these are some of the reasons why it's really hard to accurately analyse performance, particularly where it's happening live and we're trying to recall all of that information. And Arsene Wenger summed it up uh, really nicely um, in a quote, and he said that I've got two eyes and 22 players to watch at the same time, you know, and he's really alluding to there the fact that he can't watch everything while the game is going on. And also, if we think about the game, uh, it seems a long time ago, unfortunately, if we think about crowds being in games. So if we look at the picture on the right hand side, we may have, you know, a manager trying to observe that game accurately, but they're going to have the influence of the crowd. You know, there's going to be distractions. So, you know, these are all reasons why our observation piece, which is the first part of our definition in performance analysis, that's why sometimes that can be a little bit tricky. So as a discipline in terms of performance analysis, we have some processes um, and some ways to make sure that we're able to help coaches observe that information more accurately. OK, so they're kind of the first two points of the session covered. So we've got a bit of a definition around performance analysis. And hopefully now, you know, you guys already knew, but for some of you that didn't or just to try and add a little bit more information to that kind of why we need performance analysis. And it really relates to our inability as humans uh, to be able to observe that information accurately. So now what we're going to get on to is the fun bit, in my opinion. So we're going to have a look at some performance analysis software. So with any luck, I've just got to do a little bit of moving around here to get us to the right screen that we need. OK, so just bear with me two seconds. And hopefully we may be able to see what we need. Can you see my Longo match screen? Excellent. OK, so for those of you that don't know, um, Longo match is a performance analysis software. Um, there's lots of different performance analysis softwares available. Um, this is one that we use at the university, and it's also used by a number of um, club teams um, within different sports. Quite a lot of football teams will use it. And I'm going to try and show you some of the different things that we can do with this software and just as a little taster for today. So the thing we're going to look at is corners. It is in football. So I apologise to any non-football fans out there, but hopefully most people will be able to understand and appreciate what a corner might be. So within the software, um, we've got this button called our analysis dashboards. And this is where we can code up a corner. So when I say code up, uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about what that means in a minute. But I'm going to need your help first of all. So if we're going to analyse a corner, so we're going to want to give the coach information back about what happened in the corner. Have you got any ideas about the types of things we might want to know about that corner? So I'll just put it out there first of all to see if anyone anyone's got any good suggestions before I give you any clues. So again, if you're happy to write stuff in the chat, my wonderful assistant Penny will be able to relay that information, hopefully. Um, Sophia's written position of teammates and opposition. 
Excellent. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so Isabel's written the same and flight of the ball. OK. Um, flight of the ball, e.g. height, spin, speed, uh, okay. wind direction. OK, so some of those things really useful, um, but a little bit tricky perhaps to observe in our kind of game footage, because what we're going to do is we're going to look at a video of a team playing a game and then we're going to try and analyse their corners. So maybe try to think of things like what type of delivery was the corner? Um, there's one to start with. Any other suggestions in there, Penny? Uh, the type in. OK. <laughs> patience, Naomi, patience. So in terms of the ball, I mean, a number of the rugby balls now have um, a GPS sensor in, don't they? They do indeed. Yeah. And that's a nice way that kind of the video analysis, which is kind of what we're doing today, can link up with that sort of GPS analysis, whether that's the GPS unit on the players or the GPS unit in the equipment. So whether that's in the rugby ball or the football. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of cool ways to kind of link that up. Cool. We've got Amy suggesting whether or not they scored. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I like that. Um, is that in swinging or out swinging? Perfect. Good. Taylor use of curve, etc. And you in body movement of the person hitting the ball. Excellent. Yeah, some really good ideas there. Um, so what we can do in our kind of Longo match software is we can decide what things we want to look at. So I'll click on this kind of edit button here and I get the option to add a new subcategory. So I'll take a couple of the things that you guys suggested in the chat, which was brilliant. And I think someone said whether the corner was successful or not. So we'll have that as kind of our main topic. And then underneath that, we can have a couple of options. So we can have, was it successful or was it excellent we don't want that to crash so hopefully that was just a fleeting moment the joys of a live demonstration anything can happen um so yeah the first thing we'll look at is whether our corner was successful or unsuccessful and then i think somebody else said whether it was in swinging or out swinging so we'll add that in we'll call it swing and what we'll do is we'll have in swinging, out swinging, and I'm also going to put in a not applicable. And the reason I'm going to put in a not applicable is in case a player um, did a short corner, for example. So they may not have done a normal sort of long delivery. So it may be something else. And then the other one, I don't know if anyone mentioned this, but I'm just going to put in first contact. So, and by that, I mean whether the ball first of all went to our own team, so a player on our team, or if it went to opposition. Okay, I don't think I've got any typos in there, but apologies if I have. Okay, so, oh, excellent. I've had a crash on Longo Match, so bear with me two seconds and I will reload it. Uh, apologies for that. So now I'm going to have to do a little bit of quick typing to get us back to uh, the point that we were at before. It may have saved it, but of course it has not. So we'll just put that in again. See how quick I can type under pressure. Typing's gone to pot. And then first contact was our next one. OK. So here you can see now that we've got our uh, corner um, analysis system ready to go. And then what we can do is we can load that in to when we when we look at a game. OK, so I'm just going to we'll save that. 
and I'm going to create a little project for us to look at. So don't worry too much what I'm doing at the moment. I'm just getting this ready um, for you to be able to see. OK, so what we've got now, just make it nice and big so hopefully you can see. Um, we have our game footage in here. So you can see that that game, hopefully it's not jumping around too much and you can see the game is playing. What's really nice in Longo Match and other analysis softwares is that we can speed up our footage. So because we're looking at corners, um, it's quite easy to spot them. This is why I chose this for today's um, demonstration. So we can actually save a little bit of time and watch the game in kind of full speed um, or five times speed as we're watching it now. Um, and then as soon as we get to a corner, that's when we can do some of our analysis. So I'm just going to, um, I have prepared this, so I know kind of where a corner is. So I'm just going to flip forward a little bit. So we're currently in the sixth minute of the game. And as you can see, and again, I said it was quite easy to spot, we can see that we've gone to a corner. So this is where we get to do our analysis. So we see, can see the player is going over to take the corner. I'm just going to turn the speed down a little bit. And what we need to do is we need to watch the corner, bearing in mind we need to remember the things that we're looking for. So we want to know, first of all, who was the first contact? So we can see there that it's gone to our own team. And then we wait to see what's happened. And that's the result. OK, so in order to code that up, I click on corners and then I get to answer these questions. So first contact was definitely own team. For me, it wasn't in swinging or out swinging. It was played short. And then I just want to put it over to you guys as to whether you think that corner was successful or unsuccessful. So if anyone wants to either chat on the text or feel free to jump on the mic, I'd love to hear what you think about that. I think it was successful. OK, why were you saying it's successful, you and what was your well, criteria? Well, it was the skill that we were looking at. It wasn't whether the person, the teammate, um, person hit it to what they did with it. The skill performed was successful. OK, yeah, that's a really good point. So the corner was successful because you're saying that went to the first player, um, which is what the, the person taking the corner intended to do. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I assume so. Yeah. OK, cool. Yeah, no, good point. Anyone else got the same opinion, a different opinion? Uh, Sophia's written unsuccessful in terms of scoring, but successful because it stayed in possession and provided a chance. Yeah, OK. So I'm not I will click one or the other in a minute, but that's not saying either one of you is right or wrong. So I'll click successful just because that's the first one on my list. Um, but it raises just to add to that. Sorry, Naomi, um, yeah. Isabel's just written successful in terms of the actual skill, but unsuccessful in terms of the routine. Excellent. Yeah. So, you know, and this throws up a really important thing in terms of performance analysis. So, you know, we rushed in. I rushed in. I led you to rush in uh, to kind of come up with some criteria. But what we didn't have was a really clear definition of what those things meant. So that's something that's really critical in performance analysis. And we call it our operational definitions. So before kind of doing this for real, we'd need to have a list or a definition of what was successful um, and what was unsuccessful. And that goes back to our earlier point about whether we're being subjective with our information. So the whole aim of performance analysis is to try and be objective. So we need like a list of our criteria. So which is really good because that kind of brings up a really interesting point for us. And in terms of that thing that I've just coded, that that thing sorry that's not very good uh, <laughs> that corner that i've just coded comes up here okay so we can then if we want to view that corner we can click on it and it will take us to that clip of that corner that we've just coded okay so you can see our tags along the top here own team not applicable and successful okay um so we'll do another one um so i think yeah we're quite lucky that that corner went out for another corner. So we've got another one straight away. 
And so we'll have a look at this one as well and see what they do. So another short corner. OK, so if we go into code that one again, so I click on my corners again, um, we'll start with the easy one. So it went to the own team. Um, again, I would say it wasn't a swinging, in swinging or out swinging, so it was not applicable. Um, and again, we can have the same debate. Um, I'm going to put my hat on that one being successful. Um, for me, my definition of success was that there was an attempt on goal. Um, so it meant the goalkeeper had to save it. OK, the other thing I can do as well is I can click the team. So it was Brighton that had that um, corner there. So if I've clicked that, what that then does, it kind of codes it up here. So if I'd have done it on the first one as well, we'd be able to see kind of the list of Brighton corners. And really, this is as simple as performance analysis can be. It can obviously be a lot more complicated than this as well. Um, but in its very simplistic form, this allows us to analyse one aspect of performance. If we were coding a football game kind of in the real world, we would have a number of different dashboards down here. So we're just looking at corners, but we may have one for possession, we may have one for throw ins, offsides, set pieces, whatever it may be. Okay, so we'll do one more because I think we're going to get another corner shortly based on my list. You can see Brighton had a lot of corners in this game. They actually lost the game 2-0, but they had a lot of corners. So we'll just let this play. So we'll see if they do another short corner, if they're going to do something a little bit different on this one. So they've gone short again. And I'm pretty sure that maybe wasn't the outcome they were looking for. But in terms of us coding that up, again, we could go corners, own team, not applicable, and we'll go unsuccessful again, and we'll code that up as Brighton. So as you can see, we get our corners here. The other thing that's quite cool that we can do is if we come down to this view here, and this is kind of where I say about the software kind of coding it, what it does is... This is kind of like our timeline along the bottom. And this sort of distance here is the length of our clip. So if we want to change how long or short that is, it's really simple, but we can just bring that in. So therefore, now if we look at that clip, we just really want the relevant information. So we don't want too much build up and we don't want too much afterwards. So then that's the end of the clip there. So it's about trying to make your clips of a suitable length so that the players and coaches um, don't get too bored. Um, and other things we can do when we're in the software is that we can select which of these clips to put in a playlist. So um, instead of the players or the coaches having to look through the whole game, we then basically can just show them these mini movies um, and we can we can send all these clips here to a playlist. So I'll just put them in a separate playlist now. Let's call it ZZZ for now. And here we have our three corners, but we might not want to show them the second one. So we can delete that one. Uh, we may want our third corner to come first so we can move things around. And it's just a really flexible platform to allow us to analyze our performance um, and to more importantly feed information back to players and coaches um, so I think I'll kind of stop there um, hopefully that's given you a bit of an understanding of performance analysis which is one of the key areas um, within the sport and exercise science degree program uh, we have a specific module in second year um, in third year, we don't have a module, but students sometimes opt to do their dissertation in performance analysis. And we also have a master's programme. Um, so it would definitely be an area that you'll hopefully become familiar with. Um, and yeah, hopefully that's just a brief introduction um, to the area for you. Um, happy to obviously open it up to any questions you may have on this specific topic or anything more broadly um, about 
the course or the university as a whole. Yeah, so to just add to that, um, as Naomi was saying there, a number of our students actually do end up taking placements with our local clubs because we've got a really good network in, of links with our local clubs in netball, hockey, cricket and football and rugby. So, you know, we do have that network there available to you guys if it's something you would want to know about. Yeah, and they're really, just to add on to that as well, the, the level of the placement, you know, they're really high level placements we have, particularly on the Masters programme. So we've got um, links with um, Harlequins, we've got links with uh, Brighton Football Club, Southampton Football Club, Surrey Storm, Sussex Cricket. So, you know, they're kind of the elite level um, placements. So, yeah. Um, a good opportunity. Okay, looks like we've got a couple of questions there. So do you want to answer the two on performance analysis? Sure. So how would this topic be assessed usually? So in terms of the second year module, um, so there's no performance analysis um, in the first year. In the second year, um, I lead the module on performance analysis and we've got two assessments. Um, one is a you get to choose your own topic. Um, so you get to pick something that you're interested in, which the students really enjoy because they get to pick, you know, the sport they're interested in. And you get to come up with a research question and you write a, a lab report. So kind of a introduction, methods, results, discussion, that kind of lab report on a topic of your choice. And then the second assessment is a group presentation. And that's on the other side of performance analysis that we didn't do today. So that's on the physical side. So we get to wear the GPS units, you get to run around on the uh, multi-surface pitch um, and then we present back the findings. Um, so, yeah, that's how they're assessed within the second year module. Um, how much time is spent on the performance analysis topic? So, as I said, it's not a it's not a huge area, um, but we do have, you know, we do have offerings at second year and, and then students often choose it for a dissertation in their third year and then the master's programme as well. So there's there's good opportunities to do it throughout the course, um, but obviously there's all the other areas in terms of physiology, psychology, biomechanics um, that you'd cover as well. Cool, and then Taylor's just asked about other topics covered in biomechanics there. So I'll field that one because I, I teach um, biomechanics. So in first year, you kind of cover your, your main kind of biomechanical principles and you learn about all of your musculoskeletal anatomy. Um, and then in second year, you start to learn about sports injuries. Um, so that can involve injuries, a bit of rehabilitation type information in that module as well. Um, and then you also go on to specific sports biomechanics. So understanding in the different sports and disciplines um, what kind of biomechanics are crucial to look out for in each of those really and, and, and play a major role. Um, in third year, you then really get to get, um, what should I say, your own autonomy over the kit. So we'll have been teaching you all these different techniques through the years. Um, but in your third year, you really really get to kind of um, get to grips with that yourself so you will have a project involving um, EMG so that's electromyography which measures the activity of all your muscles and um, force plates so we have a whole array of different force plates in the university um, that you can use so you have a project on those and you'll also have one on um, 2D video analysis as well. Um, the last module that we have is an elective module for you all. And actually, I should say performance analysis is actually an elective module for you in second year. So you can choose to do that one as well. Um, but you don't have to if you've not enjoyed today. <laughs> and um, so that third module um, in your third year in biomechanics is where you learn about your 3D motion capture. So we have our 3D motion capture set up in our biomechanics lab. And um, I, well, I take that module, so I teach you how to use that. And you again have a small project to complete um, on a case study normally, um, where you get to use that bit of kit. Um, we also, in terms of our masters, we do split biomechanics into the discipline. So you have your performance analysis, you have your pure biomechanics, and then you have your strength and conditioning as well around that. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview there, Taylor. Cool. So 
guys, I'm just going to, before we go, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about where some of our graduates have gone on to from this degree. So a bit of inspiration. So I should just share my screen there for you. Cool, and um, Mandy's also here as well. So I should probably have fully introduced myself at the beginning and that I um, coordinate the sport and exercise science degree um, route with the sports performance route way, as well as the performance sailing um, options. And Mandy, she coordinates the physical activity for health route way. So um, you will all do a core first year and then you will split off into your separate route ways from there. Um, but essentially, this slide I really love because uh, it kind of just illustrates to you the impact that you guys can have with a sport and exercise science degree. Um, I know sometimes parents struggle to see what sort of career you might have out of a sport and exercise science degree. Um, and I think it is this, this slide very much illustrates the kind of impact that you can have um, with, with a degree. So you can go into your kind of applied science world or where you're looking to really enhance that performance. And, you know, that could be some of our graduates that have gone on to work in various football clubs and netball clubs here as a performance analyst. We also have a performance analyst, which is more like a biomechanist within the EI English Institute of Sport, um, working with British Gymnastics. Um, so, you know, we've got a whole host of different options that we can then go into there. Um, our sailor there, strength and conditioning assessment and physiological support within the um, RYA. We've got a really um, good relationship with the RYA and the British sailing team that we've been having going for goodness knows how many years now. <laughs> I've lost track of how many years that's been. Um, so we have a, a really good link with them. So. Um, we can see kind of where we could go with that. Some of the stuff that Mandy's um, students often go on to is more about improving health and rehabilitation. So do you want to just talk through some of those jobs, Mand? Yeah, so those jobs are quite, quite varied and they can be community based in local sort of leisure facilities um, uh, like um, uh, the leisure centres here in Chichester, for example, um, or they can be based within private healthcare companies, um, like uh, Spire Healthcare um, is an example, or they may be based within the NHS. And you'll see see one example there that we have um, past graduate Mark, um, who is a, a senior cardiac physiologist with the. Um, uh, Luton and Dunstable Hospital Trust. Um, uh, he progressed through the Sport and Exercise Science degree program, Physical Activity for Health, um, and then he went and did a master's in clinical exercise physiology um, and then progressed into, into that position that, that he's in now. So um, a lot of the job roles focus on improving health um, and well-being of individuals. They can be very clinical based, but they can also be public health based. So you'll see one of the examples on there, someone that is a strategic team lead for public health within um, Malden District Council. And um, so he focuses on less the clinical stuff, but more the epidemiology and looking at strategies that we can develop to, to improve health and well-being um, of uh, individuals, which obviously with COVID at the moment, um, things have taken a slightly different change within public health um, and instead of increasing physical activity it's more about um, stopping the spread of COVID um, which he's actually heavily involved in even though he's from a physical activity background and um, it all comes together. Cool thank you and then um, obviously a number of our students often want to go into becoming teachers themselves um, and so we do have a whole host of graduates that have gone on to complete a PGCE um, and go on to become science or PE teachers themselves. So um, hopefully that gives you um, a bit of an idea of, of where you could end up. 
Um, so as Mandy said, um, one of the things throughout your degree with us here is that you you have this common first year that you will all of you that are here would would take, but then you get a choice. You get to go down the sports performance route way, the physical activity for health route way, or some of you will have already applied for this degree for the performance sailing degree but you would have the option to switch on or off of that as well at the, that point at the end of your first year um, so it's the start of where you get to really tailor your degree to be what you want to be and I think that's really one of our, our kind of unique selling points of Chichester is that throughout your degree you get the option to tailor it and make choices as to what modules you really want to take um, and that can really just make you stand out when you do go for those jobs. You're not just a, another cloned sports science graduate. You are a unique person with unique experiences. Um, and that is particularly recognised by our employers with our um, kind of ability to have you guys have such great practical skills by the time you get out of your three years with us. You all get this hands on experience in the labs. Most of your lessons will have, you know, at least two, one and a half to two hours of you being practically hands on each week in that module with the kit. Um, so that really, really makes you guys stand out as, as Chichester graduates. Um, you've seen the facilities from Mike's um, talk earlier, but we also have a number of um, kind of of different facilities tours and things um, I see Steph's on the talk now on the call now I don't know whether she might be able to pop those into the chat box as well for us um, but there's a number of links there that will just um, show you around our facilities and hopefully once um, good old Boris says that we're allowed to be um, back face to face um, we'll be offering campus tours as soon as possible so you will certainly be getting um, a well, some advice and emails about that in the future. Hopefully, as you can see from Naomi today as well, you get this real expert staff knowledge coming in. We are all experts in our field. We are all researching or working in applied practice in our field, and we bring that into the classroom. So you really get that kind of experience from us and we try and bring those experiences into our teaching as well because it makes it a bit more interesting than just learning theory and learning from books, you know, and um, so that's why we do that. Also, if you do know Chichester, it is a nice small place to be. We know pretty much all of our students. Um, we're the good, the good, the bad and the ugly, shall I say, <laughs> and uh, we know you all really well and um, that is what makes us unique as well. We, we get to know you guys and therefore we can support you with the needs that you have as you go through your degree and kind of help you reach those career goals that you might have. Um, so hopefully that's one of the main reasons why you may want to, to kind of come to us and uh, experience what Chichester has to offer. So um, last but not least, just wanted to open up if you guys had any questions. Um, if you have any specific performance analysis questions, I'm sure Naomi won't mind popping her email in the chat or something like that, um, so you can get hold of that. Um, but if you've got any programme related questions, do feel free to jump on the mic or pop them into the chat box and Mandy and I can field those for you. Okay, guys, looks like we might be at the end of a long day. <laughs> All right, so um, please do, again, um, we, we've got a number of um, Q&As as well um, on our website and also on our Twitter and, um, and our Facebook accounts. So please do join those because you can certainly ask your questions there. Or do feel free to email Mandy or I if questions do come up and we can arrange a call or um, we can just talk through email, whatever works for you. Um, but 
otherwise i will say thank you very much for joining us and hope that you have all enjoyed the session and um i'll thank naomi for delivering the session as well today um but otherwise i will um see you all in september hopefully thank you